Hey there, Atana here, and welcome to my platform fighting game tutorial series where I'll be teaching you how to make a platform fighting game from scratch. The footage you're seeing right now is an example of a platform fighting game I made as part of a school project. With actual DI, knockback, combos, and all the things you'd expect from a platform fighting game like Rivals of Aether or Smash Bros. The first thing you're going to need to do is make the project. You only use OpenGL ES 3.0 and then make the project name whatever you want it to be. The first thing that we're going to need to do is make a stage. The reason why we want to make a stage is so that when we later make our player character, which will be a very basic player character, our player character will actually be able to stand and walk on something. So the, first, the way we're going to do this is we're going to go to 2D and we're going to create a 2D scene. We're going to have to set up some organization in our folders. So what we're going to do is we're going to save this 2D scene that we've just saved and we're going to call it test stage. Once we've done that, as you can see, it is saved under res, but we don't want that to happen because we don't want our folder system to get cluttered. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call it stages. Then drag the test stage into stages and then that should be good. Now within stages, what we want to do is create a new folder. And we're going to name this folder Smash Reel. You can call it whatever you want, but for me, I'm going to call it Smash Reel. Now, in my case, I actually have a template for a Smash Bros stage that I ripped from Super Smash Flash 2, I think. So I'm going to be providing this in the description, but I'm going to use this as my template as for making my platform fighter stage. So I'm going to close this now. I'm going to drag the image and put it into Smash Bros. You can use your own template if you want, but for in my case, I'm just going to use this as my template. So after we've done that, another important thing that we need to do is set up our project settings. So what we have to do is go to project, then project settings and then go to general and then display windows or window and then you want to change the width to 1920 and the height to 1080 likewise what we want to do is change the test the test width to 720 and then the test height to 480 then we can scroll down more and change the stretch mode to 2d and then change the aspect to keep the reason why we're doing all of this is so that the game will run in 1080p but when we are testing the game so that every time we run the game, it doesn't take up the whole screen, we will be running it at 720p. As for the stretch, we just want to make sure that if we are resizing the window, all the elements of the game will resize with the window in proportion. So now that we've set up those settings, we can now close this window and then drag in the template that we have for the stage. For this specific template, the goal here is to try and get this to be centered. So one way we can do this is by setting the position to be half of 1920 since the width of our game is going to be 1920. So you can do 1920 divided by 2. And then for the Y coordinates, which would be 1080, you can also do that divided by 2 and it should center everything. Now this is meant to take up the whole of the screen. This is meant to be like the edge of the blast zone. Oh, this is meant to be the edge of the camera, whereas this is meant to be the edge of the blast zone. So what I can do here is just times the scale by 2. And uh, even though this seems a bit big, this is good enough for now. After we've done that, another thing that's very important for us to do is to set up the 2D physics layers. So what you want to do is go to project, then scroll down, go to layer names, and then go to 2D physics. Then for the first layer, we're going to call this player. For the next layer, we're going to call it walls. For the third layer, we're going to call it platforms. For the fourth layer, we're going to call it ledges. And then for the fifth layer, we're going to call it blast zones. The way these layers work is basically going to determine how the player character interacts with the stage uh, different ledges, different platforms, and even the blast zone. For example, there may be items that the player character is able to pick up 
that when the player character touches the plant zone and they die, you might want the item to just despawn rather than just sit on the blast zone if that makes sense. Now that we've done that, we can actually work with getting the collisions to work with this template that we have or whatever template that you may be using. So to do this, what you're going to do is you're going to go to the test stage and add a child node. This node is going to be a static body 2D. And we're going to have two of these, so let me duplicate that. Now, because of the shape of this top uh, platform over here is a rectangle, I'm going to add a collision shape 2D to this node. And make this shape a rectangle. Now, I actually can't see where the collision shape 2D is. It's over there. Let me drag this over here. I make it fit the size of this uh, rectangle that you see over here. All right, so as you can see here, uh, I've set the shape of the collision shape to fit exactly how it looks like in the template. And now I'm gonna do the same for the bottom shape. Now for the bottom shape is a bit different because there's not a regular shape like a square or a triangle or a circle, we're gonna to have to use a different collision shape node and this collision shape is called a collision polygon. So for this one, the way it works is um, you kind of just draw the actual shape of the polygon. So I'm butchering it here, but you guys should have the right idea of how it should look. Something along the lines of that, but I'm gonna edit this and clear it up. So here I have just completed the actual collision poly collision polygon 2d something that's very important when it comes to making the bottom half of your stage is that you'd want to have the bottom half slightly overextend past the rectangle that you have somewhat like that you don't want it to go before that or else your character is going to be bumping its head against this little small pixel over here so you want it to slightly extend on both sides let me just do that as well over here things like this are stuff that i had to figure out on my own that was very hard to tell so yeah this is just a neat little trick and to make everything clearer for when we are coming back to this in the future it's actually a good idea for us to add a label node and call this what it is so for example this is going to be the wall Whereas for the top collision shape, we're going to call this the floor. This is just so that when it comes to us coming back to this in the future, we know what we're dealing with. And when I refer to things in the future, you know what I'm talking about as well. Now, going back to the physics layers that we created, the 2D physics, what we want to do is we want to go to the bottom uh, static body or the wall now that we've labeled it and we want to go to its collision and change the first layer from being a player to being a wall and do the same thing for the other static body we might as well also label these static bodies so for the bottom one we're going to call this wall and then for the top one, we're going to call it floor. This is again, just to make everything clearer. Now for the last thing that I have to add before I end this tutorial for part one would obviously be the camera so that we can see whether or not everything works or looks as how it's supposed to look. So you want to go to test stage and you want to add a child node. The child node has to be a camera 2D. Now, as you can see, the position for the camera 2D is a bit odd, but we are going to sort this out in other parts of the series. The main focus here is not to worry about the position of the camera, but to enable the right settings. So the main thing to worry about right now is to make sure that drag margin H enabled on, the draw limits are on, 
and when it comes to the limits these this this limit was set how far the camera is allowed to move to the left to the right up and down so i already have the limits for this template the limits for this template is this black square that you can see over here this larger black square that you see over here is the blast zone that well i'll talk about in the future but for the camera limit i already have the numbers that will make this camera fit inside that limit so i'm going to copy and paste those values now So as you can see, I've set the limits of these values. This correlates to this black square over here. Now, when it comes to the drag margin, I want the drag margin for the left and for the right to be practically zero. What does this mean? This means that as the characters move around on the stage, the camera will only drag itself up and down, not left and right. In the future, we will set up the logic for how the camera is going to track players when they are spawned into the map. Just as a note for me to explain what I mean by the limits of the camera. The limits of the camera are shown by this yellow box over here. This yellow box demonstrates how far the camera can zoom out and how far to the left, right, up and down the camera can move. The camera cannot move past this limit. So for you to get the right numbers for your camera limit, I can demonstrate it by duplicating the template that I have hiding the original template and by making the transformation of this new template 00. zero. When I do this, you can see that the limits for the camera 2D that I have matches exactly to the camera limits of the template that I have. If you are using a template, your camera limit should fit into the template that you're using. And finally, to see if everything is working, we have to play the game. So I'm gonna press the play button, select the current scene as our default scene just for now and the camera should be active and we should be able to see the template. And that should be it for this tutorial. If you liked it, give this video a like and I'll see you later. Bye.